Well, hello. It's time for a slightly late episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. Uh, I'm, I'm experimenting a little bit with some wireless microphones, so you're going to see this one here at the beginning. Uh, and, and then uh, you'll see the other one at the end. I, I just want to see what the two sound like, so I have an idea what you know what my students are hearing because I have uh, one or two students who are online due to the virus. So uh, the, this is uh, my shortcut to including them in class. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be using this microphone before the writing. You know, the regular Blue Yeti during the writing, and then I have a lapel mic that I'm going to wear after the writing. So let's dive into the pens. All right, so I'm recording this writing sample. It is flipping ridiculously hot. I walked home in 94 degree weather and uh, even though I have an air conditioner, the living room is still at 80 degrees, so it's hot. Uh, but I thought it would be fun to look at these pens and do the writing sample and I'll, I'll film the uh, parts around the writing sample later at somewhere later in the week. Um, I'm filming this on the first day of school, so uh, that's why some of these pens are here, which I'll probably mention in the introduction. So, from left to right, I have the Pen BBS 355. I discovered something horrible about this pen this week. <laughs> we'll get into that. Uh, Jin Hao 51A. Pelican Stola. Aurora St Style. Waterman Hemisphere. Aurora 88 with the... Giove Finish, Pilot Custom 823, Lamy 2000, Monterosa, Mont, uh, Mont Blanc with a turquoise finish, uh, Platinum 3776, and finally a Senator Regent. As always, I'll be doing my writing samples in this Bomo Art Journal, which I won't be able to say that much longer because I'm about to finish this journal. All right, so my first pen is this Pen BBS 355. Uh, I had a horrible disaster with this pen. Uh, I, I uh, filled it up with ink, screwed on the cap, and holy shit, the nib just bent. Uh, so this is not the nib that has been on this pen. Uh, I, I still need to do some work on it, but I decided to save that nib and do a video on nib straightening. But I'll tell you what happened. Down here, the nib met the end of the cap and bent. And I said to myself, why? Why did this happen? It never happened before. So uh, I'll just tell you my theory. And yes, the feed is a little bit bent. The section unscrews from the pen. And I think it came slightly unscrewed. And that's why the nib protruded. Uh, enough for the cap to damage it because I never had that trouble. I never had to be careful before so That's the only theory I have but anyway, this is a Pen BBS With a slightly straightened nib <laughs> Which isn't writing as well as it used to uh, Broad this is a Nema sign nib Uh, the ink in it is Lamy Coral, which is uh, a special edition. And uh, while wow, this nib sucks right now, so uh, yeah, this nib needs to take part in that nib straightening video, I think. But we'll live with it. But damn, that was a disappointment. So. I was asked to uh, jazz up my ink sample a little bit. You know, I did my cross hatches. I was asked to do some horizontal and vertical strokes. So I'm going to do part of the triangle with vertical strokes and part of it with horizontal strokes and see if that works. But uh, don't judge the pen by that. Uh, I'll tell you what's fun about this pen is this pen has um, the, I want to say COVID, Conid uh, bulk filler filling mechanism. You know, with a little cheaper, a little bit different adaptation, but 
Um, I just I'm gonna be putting a new nib on it because <laughs> my next pen Jin Hao 51A which has an absolutely gorgeous finish a little bit of a hard start there but it seems to be keeping up right now uh, the ink in it is diamine jade green uh, this is a really small bottle but I just decided you know I need to use that puppy up so that's what I'm trying to do. This isn't one of my favorite inks at all. My next pen does have one of my favorite inks. This is a Pelican Stola 3. This pen sat in my drawers for a long time. But this year I decided, you know what? I'm going to have pens for school and pens for home and uh, never the twain shall meet. This is one of my school pens. So uh, it's going to stay at school, never going to come home. Steel nib pen. But yes, the pens at school are not like my platinum Izumo or anything. But they're not bad pens. This is a good writer. I don't know what size the nib is. I didn't have that information but the ink in it is Pelican 4001 Brilliant Black and this actually is a really good Daily Raider pen if I didn't have so many good pens in my collection I think I'd be writing with this one a lot little bit of a stub like character to the nib but it's it's a nice pen it's, it's a good one for just doing writing my next pen also in the at school collection is the Aurora style this is a gemstone I want to say rose gold you know kind of a retro looking pen but damn that's a nice looking thing has a broad nib in it. It uh, definitely has some feedback. And the ink in it is Lamy Mango, which uh, apparently is one of their latest special edition inks. And uh, presumably has a safari or two to go with that. A little bit more feedback than I like, but the pen is just so much fun. I can forgive a little feedback. And my last pen that is going to school is this Waterman Hemisphere. I haven't inked up this pen in a long time, but ooh, a little bit of the finish is scratched off there. Um, but, you know, it's, it, it's a perfect pen for the sink. And the ink in it is Noodlers, which has two O's, Bay State Blue. Uh, this is the only pen I put that in. And it has definitely stained the heck out of this pen, but only stained the heck out of this pen. Not any of my other pens.
So can I give my opinion on Bay State Blue now that I've been away from it for a year or so? It is a really bright color. I think it's a really nice blue. But, is it worth it when you put it next to all its other foibles? Are there other nice blues that don't have all the foibles? That's the side I'm on. So those are the pens I've been using at school, um, keeping them in a cup on my desk. Uh, I'll be honest, um, they will probably not run down as fast as my pens at home, so don't expect a school pens every week. Uh, my next pen is the first of my at home pens. I just published its uh, first impression this week. This is an Aurora 88 with a Giove finish. I uh, apparently gave some people the impression that I was surprised by the color. No, you don't spend that kind of money and say, Oh my gosh, I didn't know it was that color. Huh? I knew. I think it's a very attractive color. It just doesn't scream Jupiter to me. So this is an Aurora 88. I am... Uh, has a broad nib on it. I'm almost through this bottle of ink. It's Hiroshizuku Konpeki. Oops, Hiroshizuku Konpeki. Uh, I, I've been kind of focusing on writing down certain bottles of ink if I can. This is one that seemed to be low enough that I thought, hey, a few more fills, it could be gone. Which seems totally worth it to me. You know, fewer bottles of ink. I, I, I kind of have this idea of becoming, I don't know if I want to become an ink minimalist, but definitely an ink smallest, because the number of inks I have is flipping ridiculous. This pen will hopefully help with that whole goal of shrinking down the number of inks. And I just want to say that the last time I had this pen out, I had Lamy Black in it. I gave up on it. I actually emptied the pen. Uh, the ink I have in it now has worked superbly. I filled it full, and I've written that much with it with no trouble. So this is a Pilot Custom 823. Has a fine nib, so, you know, not exactly an ink hose. Uh, but the ink in it is a Roshizuku. Yamaguri. Which is a really nice brown. Doing really messy squares this week. But anyway, the, these pens are sitting at home. Um, the other ones are sitting at school. I think I'm going to start filming pens in use on Sunday. So this Sunday may not see much change. Because then I can like bring the pens home from school for the weekend. Fill them, clean them, and whatever if, as needed. Replace them, maybe. And... Uh, Match them up with what's at home. At least film the writing samples on Sunday. Okay, this is a... Oops, turn it the other way. Lamy 2000. Uh, this used to be the pen that would ride in my pen pocket, or my shirt pocket, to school and back. But, you know, with the virus and everything, it's staying at home. So it's not going to be written dry as often. Lamy 2000. This has a fine nib. And again, Pelican. 4001. Brilliant black.
My first Lamy 2000 had a finer nib on it. This one seems a little bit too broad for a fine. Uh, but that first one I had, I dropped on the floor, nib first, and that was all she wrote. So uh, this is what I have. My next pen comes from the magical world of Mobile. This is a Mobile Monte Rosa Turquoise. Um, 1960s, it has a very 60s look to it. You know, it kind of has that same aesthetic as this Aurora style. Maybe not the slanted top, but otherwise, it just... They, they, they seem so similar. Uh, this has a semi-hooded nib. And the ink in it is Montevic. No, it isn't. It is Lamy Turquoise. Which is kind of an interesting color. Second to last pen is this, uh, Platinum 3776 has the Sheng Yo finish, but the real star of this pen is that wonderful coarse nib, which is platinum speak for double broad. Uh, the ink in is platinum. Carbon black. A really good, very permanent nano type ink, which means that instead of a pigment, it has a small particles suspended in water. And of course, once they dry, that means they're waterproof. My last pen is definitely not waterproof. It's a Senator Regent. It has a medium steel nib. And the ink in it is Girbon Possier de Lune. And I have to say of all the pens I've had this ink in, I think this one handles it the best. Uh, this really is kind of a nice dusty purple type of color. And of course the pen just feels amazing in the hand. So those are the pens and inks I've been using this week. Alright, so now I'm on the uh, other microphone, the lapel mic, and uh, we'll just see how the sound is a little bit different. So, uh, yeah, don't expect to see the school pens every week. Uh, I, they're not going to change much. Uh, I'll bring them home to refill them when I need to, but, yeah, they won't change. Uh, but I'll keep my uh, collection of pens at home down a little bit because, you know, I don't want too many pens inked up at a time. So uh, I wrote a list of topics I just wanted to hit. One of them was uh, just how presentation changes things so much. You may or may not know the German series Dark. Uh, it's, it's a TV series. It's science fiction. And uh, I think the name of it is a pretty good description of the mood of the show. It's not a happy show. You know, it's a 
very, very interesting and very well done, but definitely not a happy show. Uh, but Netflix, uh, now that it's done, Netflix did a trailer for it as though it was a romantic comedy. And it was just kind of funny, you know, you, you, yeah, everything in the trailer is straight from the show, but just by how uh, the presentation, the framing, totally changes your impression of it. I just, anyway, I thought it was interesting. Uh, I am back in school. Uh, the reason I didn't post uh, earlier, same thing as always happens. I just don't talk this much in the summer. And uh, I lost my voice. So Friday was no good. Saturday was better. Sunday, uh, I probably could have done it Sunday, but it was just my throat hurt. So I'm, uh, you know, I just gave it a weekend to heal. Uh, hopefully it's healed up stronger because now I've got five days I have to teach, so we'll see what happens. But now that I'm kind of in the regular swing of things, I'm also not talking as much as I do the first couple of days of school because it's more kids doing things. Uh, but the virus is going up in the state. We actually had a huge increase of the virus up in uh, Stark County, which is where Dickinson, which is our local city, is located. I, uh, well, with my, with my laryngitis, I just, I, I wasn't probably going to go to Dickinson anyway, because I didn't want people hearing me and thinking, COVID, COVID, but uh, I need to get my bicycle repaired. But, you know, when I saw how the cases have gone up there, I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to stay in my little county that has only two cases. Well, I think we're down to one active case now. Uh, one active case of the virus. Um, actually, the the student I'm using this wireless microphone for uh, probably doesn't even have the virus. I, I don't know the whole rules about isolation, but he has to stay home for until a certain date. So, uh, yeah, he's we're I, I'm trying to turn the when he's in class. I'm trying to turn the computer toward the classroom. So he can at least see his friends. He only hears me. Um, there's a really loud air conditioner running behind me. And uh, I screwed up my first recording of this. And I'm doing it again. This lapel mic isn't picking it up. So that's pretty cool. Um, but I can walk around the room with this. I, I do a lot of my writing with a Wacom wireless tablet now. Uh, which makes me a lot more mobile. I also, uh, when we do labs, I'm having his lab partner, because our school is one-to-one -one with uh, Microsoft Surfaces. So uh, when we're doing labs, I'm having his lab partner just work with another group, because she doesn't need to be stuck by herself. But then she turns on her computer and d does a video with him so he can sort of be part of the lab. It's not as good as doing it, but, you know, I'm trying. I, uh, I saw that, uh, well, Sturgis had a quarter of a million people there for uh, the rally. Uh, that's down quite a lot from previous years. I wouldn't have touched the thing with a 10-foot pole even in a non-COVID year, because, ew. But uh, the thing is, I wish they wouldn't have done it, first of all. Uh, but on the one hand, when you're riding a motorcycle, you're kind of by yourself. Uh, the campgrounds and stuff, you're, you're spread out. Uh, it's outdoors, a lot of it. And if that was it, I mean, I still wouldn't be a fan, but okay, we'll, we'll, we'll deal. But what's happened is uh, people go to bars. And I actually included my uh, pens in use where I visited Sturgis in, in my links. These are big bars. You know, part, some of them have outdoor parts. But in bars are where we're seeing a lot of the virus getting spread. And we're all, we've already, it's been long enough since the end of the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally, we've already started seeing cases popping up of people who were at Sturgis. So, saw that coming. Um, on a couple of side notes here. I also saw, I read an, inch, an article by a gentleman named Ed Brayton, 
changing topics entirely here. Uh, he, he was a columnist for many years. He was also a comedian at some point. But the last couple of years, he's had some health issues and uh, pretty serious health issues. So just a short time ago, I guess uh, it was dated August 10th, he did a a final goodbye column and said he was going to hospice and didn't expect to last too much longer. And uh, I don't know, I, I just felt like that one was a... It was a good column to read, you know, uh, this is a man who's made peace with uh, the end of his life. And I guess I'm glad he got to go out on his own terms, as it were. Anyway, it just uh, something I thought was worth reading. Uh, I don't remember why I titled that section of my notes, Comments Online. Uh, I wonder if it was some... Oh, yeah, so, some of the comments in it. You know, here's a man pouring out his heart and admitting, yeah, yeah I'm done. And he, he did die a few days after he wrote that column. But... Uh, I don't know, there's something about internet comments that just can be so sick. Uh, I'm pretty lucky on this channel. I, was, I posted a kind of interesting comment I got in the chat a little while ago. The community tab, sorry. Uh, but, you know, for the most part, the comments I get are pretty constructive. Uh, some of them are silly, but, you know whatever but uh, anyway just I, I don't know why people change when they're online because a lot of the stuff it's like would you say that in person I also posted uh, two articles here about uh, Inuit youth in Greenland and another article about Greenland uh, I found the article about Inuit youth in Greenland quite interesting because uh, you know, I, I've spent some time teaching on uh, Native American reservation here in the United States. So I got kind of a taste of culture there. So Greenland is not for sale. Uh, Denmark is not selling it to the United States. It's uh, part of Denmark. But uh, has... A lot of the same problems that you see on Native American reservations here and I just found that interesting because it's a totally different country with some, with some of the same problems and uh, so I found it worth reading there, there's a video that goes along with it that you get to see a lot of different people and you know isolation that they deal with um, Different reservations here in North Dakota deal with different levels of, re of uh, isolation. I don't think any of them are quite as isolated as the one in Greenland, to uh, just be honest. But there are some reservations in the United States that are quite isolated. Uh, I'm thinking like some of the reservations down in Arizona especially. Uh, some of them that don't have running water or electricity yet. I mean, yipe. It's 2020. So, anyway, I, I felt it was worth watching. Um, and then finally, the big topic, of course, we're back to school. Um, this wireless mic is one of the changes. Right now, I only need to use it in one of my classes. But I, I can see as cases come up, I may be using it in other classes. Um, I'm teaching with a mask every day. I, I've discovered that some of the masks I bought... Oh, do I have one over here? Nope, I don't. Of course not. Oh, there's one. Ah! Some of the masks I bought, yes, it's a squirrel, come with a filter in them, and they're the most comfortable to actually wear, but the students don't understand me as well. So then I have some uh, flimsier masks that don't have the filter, but then it ends up going in your mouth and stuff while you're talking and breathing. Um, but... The students can understand me through them so I'm kind of a horse apiece about that I uh, I've been switching back and forth but yeah spending your day teaching in a mask it's not as uncomfortable as I thought it would be um, 
not too many students are wearing masks. There's a few. Uh, we are right now at the level we're at in this state. Masks are not required. If it goes up, then masks will be required, which is going to be interesting in a right-wing state like this. Um, we are, we made a, the high school where I teach is kind of O-shaped. It's got classrooms in the middle and a hallway on either side and then kind of two connecting hallways. So we, we are just requiring students, it's one way, uh, just clockwise. So yeah, sometimes they have to make a couple of trips around to get to their locker and then to their class, but you know, it, it's to limit contact. Uh, we, we had to space out seating in the cafeteria, which has been interesting. Um, and of course, most of the teachers are teaching with masks. It just is a very different world. Uh, we had to have assigned seats in our classrooms. We had, of course, I've always done assigned lab partners. Uh, we, we just really had to change a lot of things because to hopefully prevent transmission if somebody has the virus. Now, the nice thing where we're at, we're not a Florida. We don't have the high numbers of cases, uh, especially where I live. Like I said, my county, one or two cases. We did have six at one point, but that was mostly one family. So, uh, you know, it, it, our numbers are pretty low here. So we're relatively safe. So, so uh, you know, we, we are kind of at those numbers where Europeans are going to school. And uh, I think it's okay that we're doing it. Uh, what makes me nervous is what happens when it goes higher. And I'm not so much worried about it going higher here. It could. And if it does, I mean, people are not doing precautions around here. Uh, it will be quite the mess around here. But uh, for now, we've been relatively safe. Um I am not going to be surprised if at some point this year I do end up teaching online. The only part I'm really dreading is the half and half. Because they have a schedule where half your students are in the classroom spaced out, half of them are at home doing class online. Uh, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to handle that one if we get to that point. Uh, I, I, you know, I have plans for if we go totally online... I have plans for if we're in person, uh, we, we may go to a block schedule. You know, there, there's different options. One, one of the options when we get to a certain level is uh, block schedule and then one day online. Uh, block schedule, for those of you not in education, that means the periods are double length, which means fewer transitions, fewer chances to contact outside your classroom. Uh, but I will say, classrooms are not built for spreading kids out. Some of my classes I can socially distance. Some of my classes, no. I have... And, and okay, this is big by North Dakota standards, especially uh, rural North Dakota. And my room. My room is kind of limited seating. Uh, my largest class right now has 23 kids. And... Uh, so almost, I've got two extra desks, but basically every, I had to bring in extra desks. Every desk is full. And, uh, yeah, you, you just can't spread them out. Uh, I could spread them back to the lab tables, but if you're a teacher and you teach, these are freshmen, spreading them to the lab tables during class when you're explaining things is just asking for trouble. Because they'll fool around with stuff. So you don't want them sitting at the lab tables. So, anyway, um, you know, I, I got a little grief for how packed in they are, but it's like, what do you want me to do? So, uh, and it's not just my classroom. Most classrooms are dealing with it, because compared to other schools I've taught in, this school does have smallish classrooms. Uh, just the way it was built for another time. So, anyway... Uh, where I've been, because I, I missed the last two pens in use, I just want to address that real quick. So the first thing, I spilled water on my card. Z. 
I had the two cards out and I knocked a glass of water over on them. And you wouldn't think water would cause any damage, but in both cameras these cards are unreadable. So I had to get new cards and wait on that. I guess I could have done this or used a different camera if I'd been thinking about it. Um, I was just so mad at myself for destroying the cards. But yeah, there was a way around it. I really had no excuse. It might not have been the quality I like to do, but I should have done the pens and used the one week. The next week, I'll tell you what happened. Uh, and this isn't a happy story. I actually had a couple of bad things happen these last two weeks. It's not been a good few weeks. It's, you know, car broke down. Um, I had to walk <laughs> home from where, the, luckily it was in town, so, you know, no, no horrible distances, just I was on my way to grocery shop after two weeks of not grocery shopping, because I've been trying to spread out my grocery shopping, and, uh, yeah, the car broke down before I even got to the store, so then i waiting even longer, trying to spelunk in my freezer to make meals, so it was a good challenge, but, yeah, I was really happy to get my car back even it was just a sensor but when you're driving a Toyota Camry and you live in the middle of nowhere in North Dakota it's kinda hard to get parts and it's a 20 year old car so bonus extra hard to get parts but anyway I, I got the car back I immediately went grocery shopping um, so uh, then I was going to film pens in use trying to think what week this was that uh, Friday it must be I, I, I should have written my dates down but anyway I didn't I just thought well I'll, I'll film it tomorrow and tomorrow came and I didn't film it and so I thought well I've been doing them Sunday more than I should over the summer uh, so I thought well I'll do it on Sunday well guess what uh, that morning I checked Facebook I don't check it every day but I checked it that day and there was an announcement from my aunt that my uncle had died. Uh, and don't, you know, you don't need to offer condolences or anything. I did not know the guy. Um, he was my brother, my father's second youngest brother. His very youngest died several years ago. Uh, so this brother just died Sunday morning. And uh, so it was really hot during the day, so I didn't film because... When I'm using the Blue Yeti, that, that air conditioner is picked up by the sound. I thought, well, I'm going to talk to my parents tonight. It'll be cooler then, and I'll turn off the air conditioner, and we'll film it. So uh, I talked to my parents, and uh, kind of in the process of having our conversation, I, I said, you know, I'm real sorry about Uncle, you know, about my uncle dying. And anyway... Um, I hope you're never in this situation, but I turned out I was the one that broke the news to my dad that, yeah, your only surviving brother has died. Nobody had contacted him. Um, yeah, that was difficult when I realized that. And, you know, to do that over the phone, you know, I, I thought, he knew and I thought he'd had time to prepare so I thought I you know I was just you know expressing my condolences because I didn't know this uncle because he lives elsewhere in the country and my father's side of the family just we don't they never visit but uh, of course my dad grew up with him and like I said my dad was the oldest my dad is 80 um, and now he's outlived both of his brothers his younger brothers that he would have helped take care of because, well, his father died when my dad was quite young. Um, so his mother had to raise three boys on her own and she had to work several jobs in order to do so. So my dad would have been left with a lot of child care responsibilities. So he had to have been close to them at one time. Like I said, I don't know what happened there, why nobody contacted him, but yeah, I got to be the one to break the news to him, so that was, well, <laughs> as you can imagine, you, you can see how it's affecting me now just telling this story. 
Um, pens in use just was not something I was ready to do after that. Uh, and then I talked, uh, after I got off the phone with them, they must have called my brother. Then uh, my brother called me, and uh, you know he, he's all upset. He said, I don't want us to get like that. And yeah, so then I spent a long time talking to him. So I probably couldn't have filmed pens in use anyway. But uh, yeah, that was just a real great cap to the week. And then we started off to school the next day. Um, so uh, we did three days of school last week, and then we're full week this week and next week, and then we'll have Labor Day. Um, hopefully my vocal cords do better. They're, they're pretty good today. Uh, my throat isn't hurting like it did after the first day of school, so I guess that's good. But Anyway, uh, you're probably going to get two pens and uses this week. Uh, what I decided I'm going to do, I've got things I have to do tomorrow night. Uh, but I'm going to try to film it all on Wednesday night and put it together Thursday night, and then it'll be up Friday night. So we'll see how it goes. You know, the other option is I may just film it. Uh, I have to go to a football game, or I get to go, I should say, to a football game on Friday night. Because, yeah, right now they're trying to do high school sports. Um there's rules about how many guests students are allowed to bring. Uh, so you, the stands aren't going to be full of the community. They're not going to be full of the cheering students. So just each student who, who's on the team gets a certain number of tickets for people that they can bring. Uh, because I'm yearbook staff and because I am uh, sometimes do pictures for the paper, th there's kind of two of us and we have to take turns. So... This Friday will be my turn. In fact, I was at a junior high football game tonight. If I look a little sweaty and messed up, that's why. But uh, anyway, that's what I'll be doing Friday night. But I may come home after school and film pens and use then if I don't get to it Wednesday night. Because, you know, somewhere in here I've also got to do my school stuff. Uh, luckily, this will be pretty easy to edit together. Actually, pens in use in general is fairly easy to edit together. Um, so anyway, um, I want to thank you if you listen through to this much. I want to thank you for watching. And uh, if you see two pens in uses this week, that would be why. So we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.